So by the sweet will of Gurudev, we are going on to search for quotes of Chaitanya Charit Amrita in Shri Shri Radha Rasa Sudha Nidhi. And we came up last time to verse number 85. And there we will go on. And it's a very sweet topic, actually. The most sweet topic we can think about. It's about Sri Radha's unforgettable sweetness. So we start with the verse. And the quote is not far away. I cannot forget Radhika's beauty, the opulence of her newly entering youth, the movement of her eyes, her very amazing, delicious jug-like breasts, the sweetness of her bimba cherry-like lips, her smile, her words, and her playful gait. So Sri Pad in his kingly reform is engaged in Srimati's service in Yavat. When Shyam suddenly plays his enchanting flute in a nearby forest. Although everyone is attracted to Krishna's soft flute playing, Sri Radharani is mostly attracted, like a snake that is enchanted by the mantras of a hunter. Srimati rushes out of the house, flying up like a bumblebee after catching the delicious fragrance of Shamsun. The maid servant who follows her like a shadow pacifies her with sweet topics of Krishna. Just see, just see how many waves of ecstatic rasa are coming up in the ocean of their love when they see each other's moon-like faces. Their hairs stand on end, and tears of ecstasy stream from their eyes. How much Srimati's beauty increases when she sees Shamsundara. It is as if beauty gushes out of her body. The fish-like eyes of Shamsundara and the maid servant swim on the waves of that nectar ocean of beauty and sweetness that is adorned with emotional ornaments like Hava and Bhava. This beauty is unforgettable. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sings, here comes the quote, Ek bara yara nayan laga, uh, Ek bara yara nayane lage, Sada tara ridoye jage, Krishna tanu yena amra ata, Narira mon poisha hai, Yatne nahi, Bahiroi, Tanu nohe, 
Sayaku Lera Kanta. Chaitanya Charitamrita Antya Lila 19. So what is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu singing? Once Krishna's beautiful body that is like the clue of a mango tree appears before the eyes. It always rises within the heart. Alas, when it enters the mind of the woman, they cannot forget it. Out any more, even with the greatest efforts, they cannot get it out. Even with the greatest efforts. It's not a body, but the thorn of a seya berry tree. So like a thorn in the flesh, you cannot get it out. But even the Chyam Sundara, who enchants all the women, cannot forget Radhika's sweetness. So here's the point underlined by Chaitanya Chart Amita. It's an indirect brace of Radha's glories. Because first we hear about Shyam Sunda, and then we hear that even that Shyam Sunda who is enchanting everyone, is enchanted by Radhika's sweetness and cannot forget that sweetness. Like Srila Prabhupada Ananda Saraswati cannot forget that sweetness. Once we tasted one drop of Radharani's sweetness it will never, ever go out of the mind or, let's say, out of the heart. Aparupa rupa nayane majulagi anukana maduri marama hijagi This is what Shyam Sundara says during Purvarak Lila. When this wonderful form appeared before my eyes, its wonderful sweetness constantly arises in my heart. The Kinkari sees how wonderful is the entrance of youthful beauty into Radhika's body. In this age, the breasts slightly begin to grow. The eyes become a little restless. A mild smile appears on the mouth. And the mind becomes somewhat stirred by a morris desires. And this newly entering youthful beauty is not a thing to forget. And the Acharyas have blessed the neophyte devotees by recording their experiences in their books like Radharas Sudhanidhi. So if anyone feels to share something on that what we just read or has a question to that topic please whenever you want you can interrupt and ask 
or share your feelings. So we can see that even Krishna, who is actually described as most sweet person, when he is with the gopis, and he is actually the enchanter of all these gopis. Even that Krishna can never forget the sweetness of our Swamini. Because she is like just in the right age now. So completely beautiful, but not only beauty in a form we may think outside, no. Her beauty is made actually by her wonderful and beautiful characteristics. So in the material world you may see that someone is beauty, but the character is not so beautiful. <laughs> but actually Radharani's beauty is made of her good qualities. Her sweetness and beauty is unrivaled. And Krishna cannot forget it. It's not possible. He is moved in every moment from that sweetness and beauty. And here was written that actually the use is just entering in her body. But it's always like that. It's not that this was yesterday and today Krishna is remembering that he saw it already. No, it's always fresh. It's always like he actually recognized this the first time. So he is nervous. And he is completely in love. Like a boy in his age. <laughs> so he cannot forget the sweetness of Radharani. And Srila Prabhupada Saraswati, who is the shadow of Radharani, of course, because he cannot only see the sweetness of Radharani, he can feel what Krishna feels when he sees the sweetness of Radharani. And he can feel what Radharani feels when she sees Shamsundara. So he has the full impress of all this. And this impact he is writing, he cannot forget. This sweetness of Radharani is unforgettable. So if we come to that point that we will see it once, then material life is over. We cannot forget this sweetness of Radharani anymore. And there's nothing who can be compared then we will get crazy and cry for that sweetness 
that we can see it again and serve that sweetness. Hopefully that day will come soon. Maybe you can pray. I mean, mercy, please. So her sweetness is unforgettable. What to speak about her gestures. And actually here we are already in the Diksha Mantras. How she is moving Shamsundara's whole existence, not only the mind, whole existence, when she is moving with her gestures. She is making him completely mad. So this was the first quote I found in verse number 85. And the next quote I found in verse number 87. And 87 is about Sri Rata's ambrosial remnants. Her Mahaprasad, whatever she is leaving out of her love and mercy. So Sri Radha had made different kinds of sweet at home, such as Ganga Jal, knot of nectar, Karpura Keli, play of camphor, Sarapupi Amrita. Patmajini, Lotus Sugar, Kandakshira, Sara, Vriksha, Sugar Candy, Trees. It's just a little description what Radharani is making. Sweets for her beloved. Sugar cane trees, for example. <laughs> Not just sugar cane. She's making trees out of it nicely. So Krishna enjoys that. Seeing the nice arrangements of food, Krishna became very happy he sat down and enjoyed a picnic. Then Radha took her friends along and also ate. After this, Radha and Krishna lay down in the bedroom. After feeding Krishna, Swamini and her girlfriends enjoy his nectarian remnants, Mohan Swaditena. So he has written bedroom, but actually it's clear that it's uh, Nivritti Nikunja, not an ordinary bedroom. So they lay down and then the Maha is taken the remnants. How enchanting these remnants are, the maidservants can see on Swamini's face, mouth and eyes. When the divine couple lies down, the maidservants serve them in various ways. Keho kore vijana Kehopada Samvahana, 
Kehu Koraya Tambula Bhakshana Chaitanya Charit Amrita. Some maid servants fan them, some massage their lotus feet, and some serve them battle leaves. This was the quote from Chaitanya Charit Amrita. So we can see that actually in Chaitanya Charit Amrita, such scenes are also described. I don't know who was reading Chaitanya Charit Amrita before and if it was clear for him that actually descriptions of all these Leelas are there. More indirect, but there. This is very interesting. Some maidservants fan them some massage their lotus feet and some serve them metal leaves. Sripad, in his kingery form, is blessed with the service of massaging Radhika's lotus feet, while some other maidservant massages Shamsundara's lotus feet. The lucky girl is absorbed in the sweetness of these lotus feet and the enchanting divine marks on them. Tears of love stream from her eyes as she holds these feet to her chest, smells them and kisses them. Sripa does not call it massaging, but lalana, which means affectionately cuddling. Affectionately cuddling. The aspirants should also relish some of this divine flavor. So now we see this connection. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given us this present this Unat Uchwala Rasa. And he wants us to follow the great souls like Prabhupada Saraswati, like Raguna Das Goswami, and like other great souls who follow them. And Ananda Das Babaji is writing, the aspirants should also relish some of this divine flavor. So we should follow mm, the same things we should pray for and by praying for it, by praying for the mercy to get a little drop of that relish, by the time we will get a little drop. And we have also a little relish on that, and this will grow. And this actually is giving the whole bhajan life. Otherwise, it is said, Ananda Das Babaji writes in another commentary on another verse, bhajan otherwise is lifeless. If we cannot at least feel a little bit that our seva, our prayers will be recognized.
so this was the quote in verse number 87 and now the next quote is in verse number 91 like I said whenever you have some question or some comments you want to share some feelings on it please do so Verse number 91, there's the next quote I found. It's about Sura Tarangini Radha. O Sri Radhike, your eyes are like sweet fishes that swim around in an ocean of rasa. Aha ha, your breasts are like two chakravaka flamingos in the nectar lake of your body. O Surataranginī, Ganga river of love, O enjoyer of love play, your face is like a blooming golden lotus flower. May the waves of your splendid mercy meet in me. The verbal root Rad means to worship. So Radhika means the girl who is the greatest worshipper of Krishna. Without Raseshwari, Radha, the queen of the Rasa dance, the Rasa dance cannot give pleasure to Krishna. Tahavina rasalila nahi bhai chite. Chaitanya Charit Amrita. But even just two people cannot make a festival complete. For a festival, you need many people. So Krishna played his enchanting flute to invite millions of gopis to the Rasa circle. It is said, Radha Saha Krita Rasa Asvada Karan Arasap Gopigana Rasopa Karana. Sri Radha is the cause for Krishna's severing. savoring, savoring, or oh. tasting, savoring, the the flavor of his pastimes. And all the other gopis are serving as additional ingredients for that savor. Chaitanya Charit Amrita. Sri Radha is certainly worthy of her name, meaning supreme worshipper, because she makes Rasa, Rasika, Krishna, relish all the mellows of the Rasa dance by going to meet him in the company of all the different kinds of gopis. Svapaksha, her own party, Vipaksha, her rivals, and Suritpaksha, her friendly party, and Tatashtapaksha, 
the neutral party. So it is very clear that Radharani is the best, the highest, the most clever and qualified servant of Krishna. And we may remember that all the gopis are just like parts of Radharani. So without Radharani, there is no taste for Krishna in the Rasa dance. So we can remember who actually our Swamini is. There is no one like her. And she is like the Ganga River. Can you hold a river? A stream, a very great stream, a river was flooding everything. Can you hold it? Radharani is like this river with great waves. And it is said that Dukula means bank of the river or Du, like two, like two families also. There is the family in which Rani was born and there is the other family of her husband. And both sides of the river or both these families are actually flooding or flooded by Radharani due to her powerful stream. So both families are actually underwater. You may meditate on this. Whatever they say, whatever they think Radharani should do, is gone. Whatever social behavior or whatever they expect from her is gone at that moment. Flooded. She is forgetting everything, giving up everything, just to serve her beloved. So this is Radharani's mood and actually we also, in this world, we can also go a little bit in this uh, mood that actually we are flooding also everything in that moment if it comes to the point that we want to do bhajan for Radharani, we want to serve her, then we can also flood our family social system. Sometimes it comes to that point, isn't it? At least I remember in my family that actually this family was flooded completely. 
they were thinking, you know, oh, this guy, now he's in a sect. <laughs> My brother actually was telling me, you know, I quit the brotherhood with you. You are not anymore, my brother. <laughs> I heard that you are in contact with a sect. The funny thing is that nowadays he's also devotee. <laughs> It didn't took so long time. <laughs> Some years, but... <laughs> Who can resist when the flood is coming, huh? How long? You can hold a tree for some time, maybe, but <laughs> the waves of Radharani's love are so strong that everybody has to give up after some time. <laughs> so my sister was the same, actually. In the beginning, she was very against everything, and then now she's also doing her bhajan. So we can see that this strong love of Swamini is not only flooding her own families, her two families, also our, our families are flooded sometimes by that strong prema which is coming from her. And maybe in the beginning it doesn't feel so good sometimes. <laughs> But after a while, it gets really nice. In the beginning, I couldn't imagine that my brother and sister, they will also do bachan one day. <laughs> they were like that. So we have to be aware, if we come near to the mercy of Radharani, all our social life, all our family life, all our expectations in the material world can be over. Very fast. Like Krishna may have a plan But when Radharani is crossing his way in some way, it's gone. He's like hypnotized. He has to follow all the sweet movements of our Swamini. Like she is playing the flute and he is the snake moving after the flute. So this is the power of the sweetness of our Swamini. How anyone could possibly forget that sweetness if he just get one little drop? And please tell me, would you think it's possible to forget Swamini now? All of you got a little drop or a drop of a drop or something like this. A little taste from it. Would it be possible for you for, to forget this? I don't think so. Even if you would not stay straight on the way, like I saw in many cases from, you know, in More than 30 years, I saw so many people come and go. Even you would not be straight on the way, but you will never forget. Definite. It's impossible. That sweetness is such an impression. It's prema. It's pure love. How you can forget 
the taste of pure love, pure transcendental sweetness, impossible. So this verse is also about the rasa dance and the extraordinary position of Radharani. She is Braseshwari. She is the Empress of Brindavan and of course, of the Rasa dance also. The girls of Braj see the king of dancers, their lover, with blissful minds. They are absorbed in the blissful pastimes of dancing, surrounding him on all sides. They meet in groups, holding each other's hands and forming a nice circle around Madhava, playing Venus, Upangas and Pak uh, Pakavajas, which are different stringed instruments. They clear uh, the clear sky is filled with the autumnal full moon and the flowers in the forest are blossoming. The cuckoos and the bees sing very beautifully and the spotless lotus flowers are opening. looking and looking, turning and turning, holding each other's arms, these playful girls dance together. So this is the scene of the Rasa dance. Everything is blooming up. Everything is wonderfully nice. The atmosphere is perfect. So Sripad in his kinkari form sees that the rasa circle is pervaded by limitless beauty. Pervaded by limitless beauty. It's undescribable. Undescribable beautiful. And there is Gopi Krishna, Gopi Krishna. Gopi Krishna, Gopi Krishna, Gopi Krishna, circle. How astonishing is the meeting of the naturally sweet Gopis with the enchanting Shamsundra. They are Bhava, Prema, Rasa and beauty personified. Sripad fixes his or her mind, in the kink reform it's her mind, on Radharani. Mandali bande gopi gana korena nartana macerata sahanache brachendra nandana chaitanya charit amrita. The gopis dance in a circle, and in the middle of that circle, the prince of Braj dances with Radha. Sripad cannot find any comparison to Radharani's beauty that covers over the beauty and sweetness of all the other assembled Gopis. So to have a clear picture, there are 
millions and billions of copies and each of them is most beautiful but Radharani her beauty covers up all these beautiful girls together their beauty Radharani covers up that so no wonder the Cham Sundara is interested only in one, one special copy. Radha. And this wonderful special gopi is our Swamini. How proud Srila Prabhupada, uh, Prabhupada Ananda Saraswati How proud he could be in his kinkiri form to serve that Swamini. How proud he must be, or she must be. And proud in a loving way, of course. Not in the way of material pride. So this was the quote in verse number 92. Raseshwari, the queen of the Rasa dance. So if you have any question or comments on that, please So the next quote I found is in verse number 95. Radhe 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 Yes, my dear, I have a question. Um, it, it said that that every gopi is an Erweiterung. Um, is how you say in English? A part of, or uh, how you say, um, mm -hmm. expansion. Extension. Extension. Thank you, Nina Boy. <laughs> um, every gopi is an extension from Swamini, from Radharani. And on the other hand side, I heard that every gopi is, um, is a Purana, is a Rishi, Something holy, um, a holy book in further times, or a holy person, a sadhu, and and a Krishna um, had even versprochen. I said to them, "You can be close to me as a gopi, then I can meet you." This is also gopi. So how can this be? You know what I mean. <laughs> Yes, but what are we? What is the jiva? I don't understand your question now. Aren't we also expansions? Aren't we also part of Radharani? Particles, yes, but the books yes. and all the holes. 
So there are different platforms, right? Different tattvas, we say. Jiva tattva, also expansions, also particles of Radha. So there are different platforms and they are all expansions or particles of Radha and Krishna, isn't it? So that means another a platform does not mean that in the Puranas, that the Puranas are Radharani also. I think there is when there is love, transcendental love, this is Swamini. Or is this too difficult how I'm thinking now? <laughs> we can see it from different sides. Who wants to give their... If you see it like that, from Tattva side, we are going out of Rasa, we are going in Tattva. Tattva means the knowledge. We are part and particles of Radharani, like her children. So who wants to give knowledge to the children? Of course the mother and maybe also the father. They want to give knowledge to the children. They want to be like gurus, isn't it? So if Krishna sees Radharani as a guru, What he will say, please, you give knowledge to all your children. You are more clever than me. You are higher than me. I am just your dancing pupil. You are the Adi Guru. You are the first Guru. Please. So isn't she knowledge in person? Of course she is knowledge in person. And if these Puranas, all these scriptures are actually obeying and serving, this is just the natural flow, isn't it? Like we are following the natural flow. Nitya Sita Krishna Prema, Satya Kapunoi, and so on. So we are all particles and we have this Krishna Prema in our heart in a special form because we are already connected with Radha. It's just natural to follow that special connection. Like the Puranas, they follow their special connection. So they come to that platform that actually they are going back home serving in their natural way. And our natural way is to serve Radharani like a kinkari or a manjari. That's our natural position and we want to go in that. But we are all part and particles from our Swamini, isn't it? For me it's the most easiest way to see it because otherwise it gets a bit complicated. But of course you can see it from other sides and you can have different uh, um, angles to look on it. But whatever Radharani is doing, so whatever Radharani's particles are doing, is serving her beloved. So the gopis serve her beloved in different ways. The Mandaris serve her beloved in different ways. All, all living entities are doing this. And whoever is in Seva to Krishna is in connection with Radha, has to be in connection with Radharani. It is not possible in any other way. Right, because if you want to serve, you have to follow the rules of Prema.
And, and when I look, sorry, yeah. And, yeah. Oh, sorry, when I look from this, from the other side, that the Puranas, all the holy books, then Krishna is serving them when he said, uh, in another incarnation, you can become gopi, and then we can be close together. He's just doing the same like always. He's saying also in uh, chapter 18, in uh, 66, he's saying, Mam Ekam, take shelter by the lotus feet of my one. So he's also saying to them, you will get the seva of Radharani, together with Radharani. You will serve her and me. In another form. Like we want. So what's the problem? Everybody gets what his nature actually needs to have. Thank you. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Thank you for that wonderful question. It shows that every living entity, even Puranas in persons, everyone gets the mercy of Radharani. Even Krishna, you may think he doesn't need. No, yes, he need. And he wants. He wants to have the mercy of Radharani. So what present Krishna can give, if somebody is devoted to him, what present he can give? He can give the association of Radharani. This is his most precious thing, which he wants to give. Also in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it's Radharani's mood, but Krishna is also there and is actually acting in the same way like Radha. He's following the steps of Radharani, giving the mercy like Radharani. Because when Radharani is Guru, he will follow as a disciple. And how could it be possibly in another way? Brahma has to be the Guru. Otherwise we cannot talk about love. Unconditional love means that Brahma is the Guru. It's not about God. It's not about Aishwarya, it's not about religion, it's not about all these things. So love wants you to be in your natural highest position possible, to exchange the natural Brahma in the highest form you can, isn't it? Even we here in the material world want to do or give the best for our children, not just something. They should have, they should have it better than us, isn't it? Otherwise we cannot talk about love. They should grow more than we. They should have more than we. They should be better. They have. They, they, they should actually get the best of the best we can give. So Krishna, the best he can give is the association of Radharani. The seva of Radharani. In different forms. as it is our natural position.
So lucky we are. So undescribable lucky we are. Not everyone can get in contact with Radhadasyam. Theoretically, yes. But in praxis, there are different rasas, different souls who like different rasas. And of course, they have to be the suckers, they have to be the, the parents of Krishna and Radharani and all this has to be there, otherwise Vrindavan is not full, it's not complete. But how lucky we are! We get the, the greatest mercy in the most bad time in material existence, in Kali Yuga, where no one has any qualification. Ama hoite anandita hoi tri bhuvana, ama ke ananda dipe hoi che kunjana, ama hoite yara hoi shata shata guna, se jana alati te para moramon, ama hoite kuni bodo chagate asambhava, e kali radhate taha kori anubhava. Chaitanya Charit Amita Adi Lila, Chapter 4 All the three worlds are ecstatic because of me. All the three worlds are ecstatic because of me. Krishna says. So Krishna is giving ecstasy to all the three worlds. But is there anyone who can make me happy? Only someone who is a hundred times more qualified than me can make me happy. It is impossible for anyone in this world to be more qualified than me. Only in Radha I experience that. That is why he chants the mantra which is marked by Radha's holy name in topmost loving ecstasy. Sripad says that the wonderful holy name of Radha be manifest on my Tengu. Let the wonderful holy name of Radha be manifest on my Tengu. So what does it mean when the holy name of Radha manifests on our Tengu? It's not just a name. It is Radha herself who manifests. So by the time we will feel her, even see her, will manifest. When we speak, 
and the holy name is manifested on our tengu, we will speak in lovely words, isn't it? We will speak sweet and lovely because she is manifesting on our tengu. Her attributes are coming through the vibration of our tengu. Not because we could be qualified. It's just because of her mercy. Radharani's name manifests. And all the good qualities of her manifest then. So time by time, word by word, chant by chant, it will manifest more and more if we want that it will manifest if we invite it if we say yes radharani please i'm completely unqualified but please use my tang you use it as yours actually it is yours Because I am your servant eternally. So it's yours. It's not my. Nothing belongs to me. Everything is yours. Because I'm your servant and I belong to you. So everything is yours. You gave me this material body. It's yours. You gave me this spiritual, wonderful body. It's yours. It's your mercy. And whatever is yours, please use it as you like. So the Holy Name will manifest more and more. If we want, by the mercy of Radharani. That's why we chant her name, to invite her, call her, Radha, Swamini, come in my life, please. What she will do? Not listen? She will neglect us? Her whole body is melting out of compassion. Her whole existence. Could she ignore us if we really want? Impossible. So that's why if we want and we go on chanting and we go on in our bhaja, the holy name of Radha will manifest more and more. Even on this dirty tongue, which is considered the most dirty place in the body. So who can possibly describe her mercy? Let that wonderful holy name of Radha be manifest on my thank you. Even Krishna is praising her like that. See how she how he is praising her. All the three worlds are ecstatic because of me. But who can give me something? 
can anyone make me happy? Impossible, because only a person who is hundred times more qualified than me can make me happy. A person who is hundred times more qualified than me. That's Radha. And Krishna only sees that in her, in no one else. No other gopi. Yes, other gopis, they have a little part of that from Radha, but not in full. And now comes the wonderful thing. A kinkari has much more of that. Like a gopi. Because a kinkari gets the full mercy, the full Mahabhav from Radharani. All her qualifications. Everything from Radharani. Just imagine that. So what is the position of a gopi and what is the position of a kinkari or manjari? She can feel everything what Radharani feels. And in the same moment she can feel everything what Krishna feels. What a position! The smallest servant gets the most, the highest feelings from Swamini. This is her mercy. Krishna cannot give this. That's why he is telling, she is much more qualified than me. Forget about me. He is telling even Krishna, uh, even Arjuna, I told you everything because you are my friend. But now, because you are my friend and you are not envy, I will tell you the most confidential truth. And then he is saying, Sarvadana parichacha mam ekam sharanam bracha. Forget about all this dharma, arta, karma, moksha. Bah, forget it. Forget about this yoga paths I explained to you. Just surrender to my one. This is the most quick path to the highest goal you can reach. Isn't that merciful? He's distributing the mercy of Radha. He is a disciple of Radha. This is what him what makes him actually God, the highest. If he wouldn't act like this, he wouldn't be the highest, isn't it? Like Radharani is serving him the most, he is serving the most also Radharani. Fully aware who is Radha. So, we could consider that we are in a very, very wonderful, nice position. As a manjari or a kinkari, we will get the full mercy package of Radharani.
I think this is a good point to end here and meditate. If you really want it, you can get it if you really want. But you must cry. Okay, it said try, but I say you must cry. But you must cry for it. Like Raghunadas Goswami, like Prabhupada Saraswati, like all the great souls, they are crying for that mercy because they understood what kind of mercy that is. And they can never ever forget what kind of mercy that is. Even Krishna cannot forget, and he is God. So it gives even him such a taste. So what about us? <laughs> so you can get it if you really want it, but you must cry. Cry and cry, cry and cry, till you got the mercy, till you serve her directly. Jai Jai Sri Radhe. Thank you so much for giving your time and let us discuss this wonderful mercy from Radha in such a way. Radhe, Radhe, Goravani, I want uh, to make you special thanks for all this endeavor, because for me personally, this is the special day. Sometimes I cannot uh, be present or without camera, but it's never monologue. I, I just want that you know. When you are speaking, is not monologue. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate this uh, to meet you and to have a more personal exchange, actually, in small groups. I, I love this very much, actually. So, thank you for your mercy. And see you soon.